Hey guys, uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to take a look at COM. Uh, I'm going to explain what COM is, and we're going to give an example using Internet Explorer. I think there's going to be, I'm going to make a few more videos after this giving more detailed examples. Uh, we're going to do something simple in this one. So uh, first, what COM is. COM is the component object model. Uh, you don't really need to know what that means. All you need to know is how to use it. So uh, well, I'll explain a little bit. Components are all the different things that, that make up your computer, and uh, this is an interface that links those together in a, in a way that different programs can reuse. So you can make a program that has a COM interface, and we're going to see what that is in a second. So then it's the object. Everything is an object in COM. We're going to see what that is. And it's, it's the model for it. So um, Internet Explorer is an example of an application that follows the component object model. Other ones would be like Microsoft Word, Excel, um, Outlook, and uh, a few non-Microsoft programs. So uh, if you use Internet Explorer, uh, I actually I have it on here. It's just not my default browser. But um, there's a way to interact with it through an auto hotkey script. So we're going to start. And the first thing you do is you need to uh, create an object or connect to an object or have some way to refer to an Internet Explorer object. Um, we'll go through ways of how to connect to an existing one, so like an already open window uh, in a different video, but we're not going to do that right now. So we're going to do something called com object or abg create. All right, and it's right there. And then we're going to give it the prog ID or CLS ID. And I'm not even sure what all that means, but uh, I know what the thing is. So it's Internet Explorer. Dot application. And that's the name of uh, Internet Explorer. That's the name that it recognizes and that it's registered as. And we're just going to put this in a variable. So we're going to say PWB, which is pointer to web browser. It doesn't matter what you call it. You could call it soup or whatever. It doesn't matter. But uh, we're going to call it PWB, which is a common uh, name for it. OK. And then we're going to set PWB dot visible equals false. And the reason we're doing this is because when you're doing automation, you don't always want the internet browser to be in a window like these windows here. Sometimes you want it to just be hidden, but work as if someone was actually interacting with it. Um, and then we're going to say PWB dot toolbar. I believe it's toolbar. Actually, I have a, a script that we're writing right here. Um, toolbar, that's what it's called. So we're going to say toolbar equals false. I'm rewriting this so I can explain as we're going how everything works. All right, so now we ha we've created the window. We've set it to be not visible, and we've disabled the toolbars, which makes it a lot smaller if you're not going to be uh, doing navigation or searching Google or any of those sort of things. And then the next step is we have to tell it to do something. So we have it set up, and it's going to load the whole object and everything. But now we have to tell it what we want it to do. So we're going to have it uh, do a search for us. First, we've got to ask what we want it to search. So we're going to ask the user with an input box, and we're just going to store this in query. Um, so that's just going to pop up an input box. It's not going to ask us anything. We just have to kind of know what it works, uh, what it does for now. So it's going to ask us for our query, and then we're going to use that, and we're going to say pwb.navigate. And where are we going to navigate to? Well, we're going to navigate to duckduckgo.com slash and the query, we're just going to add it on after this. Uh, if you don't know what DuckDuckGo is, it's basically Google, but I like it better. So, uh, okay, so we're going to have it run that. And then now, okay, so what we've done so far is we've made the Internet Explorer object not visible, no toolbars. We're asking for input. So this is loading. Uh, it's loading the Internet Explorer thing. And while it's doing that, we're going to ask it, we're going to ask our user what they want to search for. And um, then we're going to take that and we're going to navigate the web browser. Now what navigate does, I'll give an example with uh, Google Chrome, navigate. 
you type something in, and that's navigate right there. That's basically what it means. It does that, except you're not typing it in. You're using a program to do it. Okay. So it navigates, and uh, navigation takes a while, and it doesn't hang up our script. So we can be doing other things while it's navigating, but since we don't want to do other things, we're going to just wait until it's done. So we're going to use a little trick called, um, well, it's, I don't really know what it's called, but uh, we're going to say while pwb dot ready state is not equal to four. Uh, I don't actually know what four means or why it's the number four. That doesn't matter. You just have to remember what this is. So while the ready state is not four, we're just going to sleep for a hundred milliseconds or a tenth of a second. That could be 50. It could be 150. It doesn't make that much of a difference unless you're doing some super serious code. All right. And then when it's done, what we're going to do is we're going to say pwb dot visible equals true. And that is our whole program. So we're going to save it uh, and we're going to run it, see if we get any errors. We didn't. Okay. At least not yet. All right. So what should we search for? How about we're going to search for something? And we hit okay. All right. So now you see we have DuckDuckGo with the query something. And we have all our results and everything. So uh, this is a really simple example. Uh, I, I hope you like this, the no toolbar look, because that's pretty cool, I think. If you're just doing a one, a one time thing, you don't need your Google toolbar and all that going on. Uh, we just want something simple. So this works for that. And uh, in the next video, we're going to be getting information off of websites. Um, we're going to be using this to access websites. And it'll, it's like um, browser automation and getting information off websites, which is usually done by downloading the websites through another script. But the benefit here is if there's any JavaScript, if there's any, um, any extra dependencies on the page or anything, we're using a full web browser, which makes everything just work so much smoother and uh, so much easier. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to be going on to this next script here, and we're going to explain that in some more depth. And I, you see I have a few more here. So uh, we'll see how far we can get on the next one. That's it for this video. Keep watching.